just find a comfortable seated position. Um, I'm on a little folding chair and bring your hands to your knees and close your eyes if that's comfortable or just have them slightly open at a gaze point. And let's start by noticing our breath. No judgment, just how you're breathing. Breathe in and breathe out normally. And then start visualizing your breath. So maybe you can visualize the air around you and notice it coming in and, and breathe through your nose, inhale. And exhale through your nose. And as you breathe in, visualize the air coming in through your nose and going down your, your, your trachea and filling your lungs. And notice if your diaphragm moves in and out. And that's the, that's kind of more of a stomach breath than, um, just breathing through your lungs and see if you can activate that deeper breathing. So let's breathe in through our nose and watch your air go all the way down and breathe out and press the air out, 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 out. And now let's start square breathing. So we're going to breathe in at the count of three. We're going to hold at the top and we're going to breathe out at the count of three. Hold at the bottom and then do that again. We'll do five rounds of that. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Hold, breathe out. Hold, breathe in. Hold, breathe out. Hold, now breathe in at four counts. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, breathe out, one, two, three, four, and let's do that one more time, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, and breathe out, one, two, three, four, Good, resume normal breathing. In yoga, the breathing that we like to do is called ujjayi breathing. And it's also called victorious breath. And that's when you constrict your throat and you're breathing in and out through your nose and you're making this sound, sometimes we call it the sound of the ocean. So let's practice ujjayi breathing and it, why do we do this? So that we can audibly um, sort of understand our breath and it reminds us how we're breathing. So let's breathe in doing ujjayi breath, constricting the back of your throat through your nose and out through your nose. Breathe. And continue you 
your ujjayi breath as we go through a short meditation. Let's wish each other wellness. I wish you wellness. You wish me wellness. And let's think about somebody who brings us joy and wish them wellness. Let's think about the candidates who are running today, who've been working so hard, filling our airways. Maybe we don't like one or both or all of them, or maybe we do, but let's wish them wellness. And as we go through this challenging time in our history, let's think about the things that bring us happiness and joy. Think of the place that you go when you want to find peace. Maybe it's sitting by the ocean. Maybe it's walking in the woods. Maybe it's sitting on your couch curled up with a book. But take yourself there. Go to that place. That place where you find comfort and ease. And breathe in ujjayi breath and out. Continuing with the mindfulness of breath, bring your second finger and your thumb up to your nose. Close your left nostril with your second finger. Breathe in through your right. Close your right nostril with your thumb and breathe out through your left. Repeat this for three times. Breathe in, closing your left. Breathe out, closing your right. And again. Breathe out. Bring your hands back to your knees. Slowly open your eyes, bring your gaze forward and bring your hands to prayer position at your chest. Place your thumb knuckles firmly into your chest. Breathe in and breathe out. We'll begin our practice with the sound of one ohm. Breathe in. Breathe in. Oh. Bring your hands to your knees and let's start by tipping our head to the left. Try to bring your left ear to your left shoulder. Now tip to the right. Bring your right ear to your right shoulder. 
Tip your chin back, look to the sky. Tip your chin forward, chin to chest. Let's do this again. Left ear, left elbow, keep your shoulder down. Right ear, right shoulder, keep your shoulder down. Look back, stretch your neck back and tip your head forward. Now do this in a rolling motion. Left, back, right, down. Left, back, right, down. Two more times, rolling our neck out and go in the opposite direction for two times. Using our ujjayi breath as we go. And come back to a neutral position. Now, bring your left hand up and place your hand, your left hand on your right ear. Stretch your right arm out to the right and gently pull your left ear to your left shoulder with an outstretched arm and switch. Right hand to left ear, drawing your neck down with your left arm outstretched. Come back again on the right arm stretched out, left ear to left shoulder, and on the other side. Our often neglected neck as we spend so much time looking at a screen, our posture has changed, our, our neck is jutting forward. Try to think about when you're in this practice to bring your, your neck back in line so that your neck is a straight line and you're not jutting forward. Sometimes it actually helps to tip your, put your finger on your chin and actually draw it back. Um, good. So another neglected part of our body, um, something that we use a lot in yoga, but we don't exercise very much are our wrists. And while we're not going to be doing a lot of downward facing dogs today, we really need to pay a little more attention to our wrists just in our daily life. So I want you to stretch your hands out, make, put your hands up like you're saying stop to somebody. And we're going to open and close our fingers for 30 seconds. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. You feel it, right? I mean, it's amazing. Now, just shift your hands around, twist your wrists, place your hands, fold your fingers together, and reverse your wrists out. We could also do this on the ground and kind of go around the sun, but, but our wrists are really, we really ignore our wrists. So it's a good time to just think about our wrists and give them some movement and flexibility. Like I said, we're not gonna be doing a lot of, you know, uh, postures on the, on the mat. We're not gonna be doing any postures on the mat, but it's good to think about, think about our wrists. So now we're gonna do a little flow, coming down to think about our shoulders now. Put your hands out in cactus. And here's, so cactus is your, your elbows are as close to parallel to your shoulders, so you're in that alignment. Again, your chin is back, your spine is straight, you're sitting up straight, you've got a natural arch to your back, and the flow is very easy. Exhale, inhale. And let's do this 10 times. And try to bring some 
tension, like you're pressing, uh, you know, something uh, like a weight. Press it forward. And you should be able to feel this in your shoulders and the rhomboids, which are the muscles between your shoulders. Press. I think there's some piece of exercise equipment in the gym that, <laughs> that does this. I don't know what that thing is called, but press. Good. And two more. And press. Good. And open up. And press. Well done. Hands at knees. Let's do some seated cat cow. So we all know what Halloween cat is. That's where your back is arched. You bring your chin forward and cow is where you arch your back in the opposite way. Um, somebody wants to explain this to me as cat, you're, you're, you're putting your booty, cat is you're arching your back and you're tucking your pelvis. So Michael Jackson pelvis, you know how he used to dance kind of, he was kind of in reverse. So think about cat, it's you're tucking your pelvis and cow, you're bringing your chin up and your booty is like J-Lo. So cat, and this is really waking up our spine and cow. Head on the inhale and cow on the exhale. Let's do this 10 times. Cat, cow. And employ your ujjayi breath. Cat, cow. Cat. Cat and cow. I think I lost count, but let's do this three more times. Cat and cow. Good. Breathe in and out. I'm going to take a drink of water. This next position is called cow face. I don't really know why it's called cow face because I can't, I can't make out how this is a cow face. You might want to scooch forward a little bit on your chair. And this is where if we had a strap, I'll get a strap. I've got this belt here. We would have a strap and we would hold on to the strap like this. So in this, I don't know if you could see that. So my, my arm is coming behind me and my elbow, my tricep is against my ear. Now, if that hurts you, maybe you can't do that. That's fine, but try to do it. And then your opposite hand is coming up your back. So it's this, it's this motion. If your hands can reach, my hands can reach, good. That's where the belt comes in handy. So next time bring a belt and we'll, we'll do this together. So the belt is like this. And you're, you're sitting straight up in your chair. And then reverse, do the other side. So you bring your left arm, your tricep is around your ear. That left hand is, my hand is sort of on my shoulder blade. My right arm is coming back so that I'm bent and my right hand is trying to meet my left hand. Now on this side, I can't reach. I can't, 
I can't get to my left hand. I would need a belt, but it's okay. It's still, you're feeling a big stretch here. That's where the big stretch is. You know, again, it's our, you know, our shoulders are often sort of a, it's not the biggest joint in our body, but as we get older, it gets very tight. And then you can reverse. I don't know, maybe you guys understand why this is called cow face. I don't get that, but, and reverse. Good. Bring your hands to your, your knees. So we've, we've got our neck. Our neck is a little bit happier. Hope, hopefully your neck is a little bit happier. We've done some shoulder work. See if your shoulders feel a little bit more fluid. Our wrists, our wrists might be a little bit happier. And we've done a little bit of movement in our hips to wake up our lower back. So one of the things that um, I definitely um, love about yoga is as we get older, we want to be in a, be in a place where we have greater stability. My mom is 90. And I'm here to tell you, she's got great bones because she falls every week. And, you know, she's in a place where it's carpeted and she's okay. But one of the things that I love about yoga and doing this practice is it helps you get steadier on your feet. And we're going to do a couple balancing uh, positions a little bit later. But so much of it is connected with your core and the strength that you have in your core because there's so many muscles there. You know, um, if you went to the gym, if you were a gym, gym rat, the trainer would say, listen, you can, you know, you can exercise your, your biceps two times a week because that's not that, that's a fairly simple muscle group. Maybe your, your uh, hamstrings, you can do a little bit more. You can exercise your abdominal muscles every day of the week because there's so many there and there's layers. It's the six pack, you know, that people want, that's just the top. But in our yoga practice, we're really trying to engage the deeper muscles in our abdomen that bring us stability. So Think about this, just like we, we talked about tucking our chin because we all jump forward because we're on the screen so much. But think about putting on your favorite pair of pants and you're zipping up. And you know that that little tuck that you do, it's not a pair of pants that's a size too small. It's your favorite pair. So you're not sucking in your guts. So you're not doing that. It's just that tummy tuck. Yeah, do that right now. It's that you kind of feel it, it's like lower down. And those, those muscles are really key muscles to bring stability. So we're gonna go through seated sun salutation B, and we'll begin to think about engaging, when, when I say engage your abdominals, it's that zipping up of your favorite pair of pants. So let's start with Hands at prayer, hands overhead in mountain, fold forward halfway, and in this halfway position, really stretch the crown of your head out to the front of the room or the wall that's, that, that's ahead of you, and now drop your hands down and fold down. Come up. Hands at your knee, stretch, bring your hands up overhead. And we're gonna do this several more times. Come out so that your hands are parallel with the floor. The crown of your head is stretching forward. Bring your hands to the floor. Come up, hands at knee, stretch up. Really stretch up into a seated mountain pose. 
Come back down halfway. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Come down, hands and mat. Come up, hands at knee. Really straighten your back and now stretch up. Come down halfway. Hands to the mat. Breathe in, come up halfway. And come to a seated position. So that was a little bit of a mimic of a sun bee. And sun bees are great when you, to get your, your blood flowing. Um, we typically do that towards the beginning of a practice um, to get our bodies warmed up. Because when your body's warmed up, it allows for deeper stretches. So because we're gonna do some stretches next, um, let's do a couple more sun bees. So your hands are at your knees. You're sitting um, completely lined up. Your shoulders are over your hips. Your knees are pointing at 12 o'clock. Your toes are at 12 o'clock. So this is true north alignment in seated yoga. Bring your hands up overhead as in mountain pose. Come back to halfway. Stretch, stretch, stretch forward. Come down. Come up, hands at knee. Hands are head, halfway down, parallel arms, hands to the mat. Come up to knee, mountain, halfway, breathing. Exhale, fold, one more, hands to knee, mountain. Halfway, fold, hands to knee. Good job. Let's stretch your right leg out. Now you're seeing the bottom of my foot. Is it dirty? No, oh, it's not too bad. Keep your hand and raise your opposite arm up and switch. If you need to hold your leg with your um, with the arm that's closest to that raised leg, please do that. And we'll do this five more times. It's almost like we're marching. Four. Five. Good. Well done. So now I want you to grab your thigh. So my, I've got my right leg raised, my knees bent, and bring it into your chest. Try to get your knee up into your right armpit. So you're gonna feel this in your I feel it in, in my thigh crease, I mean in my um, hip crease. And switch. Now I'm bringing my left leg, my knee, I'm trying to get my knee up into my armpit. I mean, not literally, but that's the direction. And switch. Bring up your left. You can flex your toes. Flex toes in these types of position, always a good idea. It helps to protect your knee and I'm not exactly sure anatomically why that is, but it is. Um, very few poses in yoga are your toes pointed. There's one or two, but it, it's, uh, it's not a common thing. Usually in positions where you have kind of a, a, a leg that's bent, it's flexed. One more, good. Now do this and tilt your head back a little bit. Okay, so I'm bringing up my left and I'm gonna look at the ceiling and I'm gonna do right 
I'm gonna look at the ceiling. And we're gonna do a couple more of these. Look at the ceiling. You can drop your chin as you raise your other leg. Look at the ceiling. Drop your chin, raise your other leg. Look at the ceiling. Good. Let's further open up our hips with um, a chair version of a very classic yoga pose, which is pigeon. Sometimes we call this, this position might make more sense to you as um, figure four. So you're going to bring your right ankle and put it on your left knee or the closest approximation that you can to that. So maybe, maybe it's over there like that, but as close as you can, bring your right knee, your left knee, so it's facing 12 o'clock. And I take my hands and I kind of press that knee down. You can see my knee, I'm not, I'm not flat. It's not parallel. I can't get there, but I can try to ease that knee down a little bit. and breathe into it. This is opening, I've got my right ankle on my left knee. This is opening my right hip. And breathe. It's funny because pigeon, is often the pose, and then we can switch. You can put your left ankle on your right knee. Your right knee is at 12 o'clock. You can see mine is not flat, but I'm using my hands and I'm flexing my toes. This is another flex toe position, and I'm breathing into it. And this seated position, seated pigeon, pigeon is often a pose that we do when we're slowing down. It's towards the end of a yoga sequence. And you often kind of sink into the pose on the floor, on your mat, and your mind wanders. And it's often where we say, come back to what was the intention that you set at the beginning of the practice. And that little meditation that we did, we were wishing people well. And maybe that wellness is um, something that you meditate on, or maybe it's your breath, or maybe it's the place you go to find comfort. But whatever that is, bring that back to mind right now as we switch. And let's do one more on each side. Bring your ankle up onto your knee and breathe into this. Sit up tall. Take the crown of your head to the ceiling and come back to your intention. And switch. Good. Bring your hands, hands back to your knees. Let's stand up and you can, I'll actually bring my chair around. Get my blocks out of the way. So I'm holding on to my chair. Let's see. Me. And we're gonna we're gonna practice some um, some balance. So you know tree pose, right? And I'm not suggesting that you do tree, but you know it's it's where your your foot goes inside your thigh. 
So hold on to your chair, however, whatever way it makes it. If both hands makes you feel better, fine. If one hand, and put your foot at kickstand. So your toes are on the, on the ground or on your mat, and your ankle is kind of up against the lower part of your shin. I've got my right foot on my toes, and my left leg is straight. Bring some bend into your standing leg. So certainly in any standing pose in yoga, you never ever lock your leg. So always bring what we say, bring some water into your, into your joints so that it's actually your muscles then that are supporting you, not your bones. So bring some bend into that. I've got my left leg. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can bring your foot up to the inside of your shin. Your toes are pointing down. Your standing foot toes are pointing at 12 o'clock. And you want to try to get yourself as shoulders on top of hips as possible, hips on top of knee, knee on top of ankle. And if that's comfortable, you can try to bring your foot up to the inside of your thigh, holding onto the chair for balance. And if that's comfortable, wherever, wherever your foot is, whether it's kickstand with toes on mat, inside uh, your shin, or up into your thigh, whichever that is, never on your knee. You never want to put that foot on your knee. Try to let go of the chair for a moment. See how that goes. Maybe you can do it for two seconds. And breathe. The other key for balance is find a drishti point. Find a point that's in front of you that's not moving that you can gaze at. And ujjayi breath. So let's do this again. Find that comfortable leg placement, whatever works for you. Breathe. Drishti. Gaze. Try to let go of the chair. Breathe. Gaze. Slight bend in your standing leg. Breathe. Gaze. Okay, let's do the other leg. I'm just going to shift my chair around. Now I'm standing with my right leg. My toes are at 12 o'clock. I've got my drishti point that I'm going to look at. My, my left hand is on the back of my chair. I'm going to bring my foot up to the inside of my shin. And I'm going to breathe. Ujjayi breath, I've got my gaze point, and I'm going to try to let go. Good job. Feet to mat. Let's go back and do the other side one more time. So we've got the we've got the rhythm down here. So now my standing leg is my right leg. I'm bringing my left foot up. I've got my drishti point. Ujjayi breath. Try to let go. Feet to mat and switch.
and feet to mat. Good job. While we're standing, let's um, bring our chair around. Now my hands are gonna go on the seat of the chair like this. I'm gonna stand back about two and a half feet, maybe three feet from the chair. Okay, so I've got a firm base. I've got some water to my knees. My toes are pointing straight forward. The forefinger on the chair seat is also at 12 o'clock. So my toes and my forefinger are pointing in the same direction. I'm gonna bring my knee to my nose, tucking my chin. Hold. Bring your foot onto the floor. And let's do that on the other side. Now I'm gonna bring my left knee up and try to touch my nose. Foot on floor. Let's do this four times. Right knee to nose, breathe, tuck. Exhale, foot to floor. Inhale, breathe, tuck with your left knee. Foot to floor. Again. One more time on each side. Good job. Now switch your chair around so the back is facing you. Like that. Your hands are on the back. We're going to step your right foot back behind you. That leg is straight. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be locked, just straight. And your left knee, my left knee is bent. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically kind of just stretch into this. So I'm really bending my front knee and I'm really feeling this in my left calf. My, I'm sorry, my right calf. My toes, my right foot, my toes are, are, are up or my heel is up. I guess you can't see my foot, but my toes are on the floor. My heel is approximately over my toes and I'm bending into this. Now, ideally, we don't wanna bend that front knee over the ankle. We wanna keep that kind of on top of the ankle, but I'm stretching into it. And slowly come back up. My, my carpet is kind of moving here. And let's get yourself back up in position. However, you know, slowly and, and uh, with caution. Now I'm gonna put my right foot close to the chair, bending my right knee over that ankle. I'm stepping back with my left leg. My, I'm on my toes and I'm bending into this. So I really feel that extension in my left calf. Step forward and switch. Go back to your first leg and breathe. And switch, last time. And find your way back to your chair for a, find your seat. I'm gonna take another drink of water, I'm thirsty. So one of the one of the most fun positions I think, boy, the sun is really blasting me, is eagle. Um, standing eagle is a balance pose, but we can do it on the chair too, and we get the benefits of, of eagle. So 
what we do is we wrap our arms. So I'm bringing my right arm underneath my left, my hands. Sorry about this. I put that down too far. My hands, my palms are, are touching. So it's like this, my um, elbows are in line with my shoulders. And now I'm gonna bring my right leg over my left and I'm gonna to try to get my right toes around my left shin. If you can't, if you can't make that shape, just bring your left toes to be on the outside of your right toes to be on the outside of your left shin. So this is Eagle and really feel the stretch between your shoulder blades as you point your palms forward. You're kind of making a beak of an Eagle. So this is, that's what I'm talking about. And switch. So now wrap your left arms around each other. Bring your left leg like you're sitting in a chair, crossing your legs. If you can bring your toes around your right shin, good. If not, just flex them. Bring your hands up, your, your elbows are in line with your shoulders, and try to pull your palms towards the wall in front of you to make kind of like a beak and switch. You can do a mountain in between if that brings some, some ease. Right leg over left, twist. Right arm under left, <coughs> shoulders and elbows in line and stretch forward so you get that big stretch through your shoulder blades. Hold, breathe and switch. Last time, left leg over, left arm under, and breathe. Good job. Hands back at knee. Let's do some chair twists. So bring your arms out into a T. And on an exhale, twist to your right, come back to center, twist to left. We're gonna do this 10 times, right. Exhale, breathe in and out. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Hands to hands to knee. <clears throat> Let's finish up with a few more cat cow. So that's where we're doing. J-Lo and Michael Jackson. So your pelvis is going back and forth and Halloween cat, Michael Jackson, J-Lo, cow shape. Halloween cat, J-Lo, Halloween cat, J-Lo. So here are the things that you can do in between our time together. You can always do some gentle neck rolls. I mean, <clears throat> I know we all kind of get stiff necks. Always practice bringing some strength to your wrists and giving them some flexibility. 
And the real biggie, and I just think it's like so important, is the balance. So when you're standing at your sink and you're, you're cooking, try to bring your foot up off the ground and keep your hips pointing forward. You're not slouching, you're not doing that. You're just standing there. And maybe you can even bring your foot out or maybe you can even start to bring your foot back a little bit and do, and then shift, or you're waiting online someplace. I guess we're not doing a lot of that this, these days, but, um, or just standing there. Try to just bring some practice of balance into your life, because I tell you, it will help us all as we get older, so that we are not in a position of falling, and we start building up that core engagement, and as you're doing, once you're practicing that balance, if you're falling out, think about tucking your belly in, like just that feeling of engagement and then breathing. And that ujjayi breath, that victorious breath in and out. That can, that's a huge, the tools are the drishti, which is the gaze, ujjayi breath, and that core engagement. Those three tools you can apply them to, I don't know, 90% of yoga poses, but particularly I find in balance, it really, really can help. Um, so let's close out in the way that we began um, with our hands at our knees. And again, let's notice our breath. However it is, no judgment, just Breathe in and breathe out. Are you breathing through your chest or are you employing some of your diaphragm? Constrict the back of your throat, regain that ujjayi breath in. Hold and out. Hold. Hold and out. Again, hold and out. Lower your eyes or close them and find a perfectly comfortable seat. No tension in your body. And return to the idea of wellness, of your own wellness, of each other's wellness, of someone who brings you joy, wish them well. For this momentous day, wish all the people standing online to cast their ballots, wish them well. And the people who have been campaigning so hard. Wish them well. And drop your shoulders down your back and find peace. And if you're feeling anxiety, go to that happy place, that place that brings you joy, where you find comfort. Go there. Visualize that, please. We'll end practice with the way that we started by bringing our hands to prayer and the sound of one ohm, 
We breathe in and out. In. Oh. bring our thumb knuckles to our forehead and we gaze up. The light in me honors the light in you. We bow our heads and say namaste. Namaste.